Welcome to Art on the Brain. I'm Kelly Drake, and today I want to play with my new Daniel Smith Luminescent watercolors and see what they can do. So the first thing I did was take my permanent marker, my sharp, Sharpie first, and just did a doodle on my art journal. And I'm trying to get a good combination of lights and darks so that when I go over these with my luminescent paints, um, there's already a good balance there. So I'm just adding a few darks here where I thought it was maybe a little too light. I'm going to start with some of my interference colors. This is interference green. And if you've seen one of my videos previously, you'll see that interference colors don't really show up on white. And so I don't have to be too careful when I go around um, on these outlines with my interference screen. I could just paint right over the white and not worry about it. Now this is a duochrome color, which is interesting. This is Cabo Blue. And duochrome colors do show up on white. And what's really interesting about these colors is that when you go on white, they're one color. And when you go over black, they're a different color. So this color, when it goes over black, actually turns to a pearlescent green. So it's difficult to see, but over these tiny little black marks, and you can kind of see it around the outline of the cloud there, it's turning green. So I don't have to be too careful around my plant there, where I had already colored it green, because even if I touch it a little bit with the Cabo Blue, it's going to stay uh, an iridescent green. Now this is kind of fun here with my ivy vine because I can paint sky all around it and just paint right over it and it's going to turn that ivy green wherever the black marker is. Yeah, it'll just fill in here a little bit. Now this is another duochrome color called cactus flower and um, as you can see over white or over another luminescent color it's very pale, um, very subtle color. But when you go over the black it's a very rich violet blue, which I really like. Um, this area here, I kind of meant to be a night sky as well as the top of the tree. So I'm using this cactus flower to kind of make a deep um, violet night sky around the constellations here. Now, I don't have to worry too much about going over some of this white because as you see it's much paler um, where it goes over the white much more of a pale color um, but it's kind of nice to go over some of the white just to get it all to kind of hang together. So now I'm breaking out the interference gold and this to me is a really fun color because it's just a metallic gold when it goes over black and over white like the other interference colors you really don't see it much but um, what a beautiful gold color when you put it over black it's almost as if you laid a little piece of gold leaf there so I enjoy the gold it gives it a really rich feeling um, I thought just for fun I'll put it over some of the grass here and if you watch this as we go as I um, go back and forth to my water with my hand you can see the light change on the gold and you can see the different colors that it makes. I so also thought it would be fun to put some gold in here where the stars are and kind of put a little gold in with the constellations. Can't see it really well now, but it'll show up a little better later as it dries. And I'm just touching up the ivy a little bit with some gold. I like to, when I use a certain color, move it around the page so that it's not just in one area. And so I'm just going to work a little more with this Cabo Blue and fill it in a little more so it's a little bit of a deeper color. And this is the Duochrome Cactus Flower. And here I'm using both versions of the duochrome color where it's more of the darker purple over the black and the lighter purple over the white. And same thing with the Cabo Blue there. Um, this is nice because the Cabo Blue turns a green color when it goes over black and over that gold a little bit. And yet the blue shows up on the white. So it's kind of fun painting with two colors on one brush and just seeing what happens there. Um, get some kind of nice surprises. 
and just putting a little bit around the design inside this. So it's almost like a sun and almost like a plum. <laughs> Not sure what that is. That's the beauty of doodling. So I decided to use some more cactus flower, this duochrome color, but I thought I'd get a little more out of the tube. Um, these interfer I'm sorry, these luminescent colors, they work well um, when you just add water to the dry color, but right out of the tube, they work really well. Um, so sometimes you just need a little bit of paint and that's fine just reactivating the paint that's there but sometimes when you really want it to pop you need a little bit out of the tube now this is interference lilac which is one of my favorite um, colors and uh, it reacts so well over black or any other dark color it really makes a beautiful um, kind of a red violet it's interference green and again with the interference colors I don't have to be too precise over the white because it doesn't really show up over white so I can just kind of paint away and have a good time and not worry too much about it which I like about these colors. This is interference gold. I'll fill in some of these stars again here um, but as I was looking at this treetop I was thinking um, that is a big dark area that really calls your attention away from everything else on the page and so I'm gonna play with it here and see if I can break it up a little bit and make it a little more of an interesting um, thing to look at rather than a large purplish black blob <laughs> so I outlined the trunk with gold there on the branches and now I'm gonna go to the duochrome Cabo blue and uh, this turns uh, iridescent green when you go over another darker color. And here it almost looks like a green gold. So it looks really nice with the gold that I put around the branches. And so I'm just going to add a design around here to break up that big blobby color and um, have it uh, not, not take your eye away from everything else on the page so much, but just to blend in a little bit needs to blend and plus it's really fun to me sometimes um, when I'm in that mood to doodle to take my smaller brush and do these little squiggly shapes for some reason that appeals to me <laughs> maybe you would enjoy something like that too um, sometimes it's fun to just let your mind go and be creative and not really think too hard about anything so now just filling in the rest of the tree canopy and I'm really liking the way that looks a lot better. Much more interesting and fun to look at and doesn't deter so much from the rest of the page. Now this is interesting. I'm taking another, this permanent marker, alcohol-based marker, and going over the grass here that I painted with the interference green. And what I find interesting about this is you don't think about a black marker being transparent because usually you use it and it looks black. But when you go over these iridescent colors, um, the black is very transparent and it only darkens the area, which I think is a really nice effect here on this grass. I didn't really want it to be black, I just wanted it to have some shading and some depth to it. So now I'm going to use my marker while I have it out and just touch up some of these little marks here that have gotten obliterated with the duochrome paint. And fill in the rest of these stars with gold now that I've got the other gold on there. Um, just try to finish up what I started. And I just want to put some gold on those little lines there. I thought that would be nice. And these little circles are kind of my tribute to Gustav Klimt. <laughs> I enjoy his work and I enjoy his little patterns that he does. And so that's somewhat like one of the patterns he has done in one of his paintings that I liked. Now I thought needed another color. It's basically all purple, blue, gold, and green. So I got my interference red. As you see, the interference colors don't look like much on the palette, but when you put them on 
especially when you put them on black or a darker color, um, they really are beautiful. And you'll see that in a moment after I get these little dots here. Um, just wanted to put a little iridescence on those. And my circles, my spheres, whatever these are, little eyeballs. And right here, you really see the interference red come to life. And I think it adds a lot to this. It, uh, as you can see, it adds a little bit of depth to those lines. So it's a good tool. This is an iridescent paint. Now the iridescent paints you can see on white and black, but they don't change color when they go over black. In fact, um, they're a little bit more opaque than the other colors, I thought. Um, and I don't care for this ruby color um, on its own. It's much more like a mauve to me than a ruby, so I'm mixing it with one of my favorite colors, which is a Daniel Smith Quinacridone Violet, um, just to give it a little more punch. Because when you put that ruby on white, it just looks like mauve, and I'm, I guess I'm just not a mauve person. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just thought this whole big white area here needed a little something needed a little color and a little depth so I'm just going to put in a little wash here with the ruby mixed with crinacridone violet and this is a much, very very much a red violet and um, okay, lightening it up around the edges and into the blue a little bit up there and I think I'll just keep going with this over to the left to just pull this whole area together that kind of, to me, looks like, um, I don't know, a space age garden <laughs> over here to the worm and the tree of life, whatever it may be. This all just came out of my head without thinking of it too much. <laughs> I should probably shouldn't admit that. So yeah, that really pulls that area together and, and just gives it a lot more excitement. Um, rather than just leaving it white, I think. And here I want to repeat it over here to pull your eye over and not just have that color in one place on the page. So again, just going over with this Sharpie marker and touching a couple things up. And um, the gold went over the black of the stars and I just kind of wanted those to show up a little bit better so I'm just putting a little more marker around those um, so you can see them better. Now one more area that was maybe just a little too white for me. Um, I thought I'd take some of this duochrome cactus flower and mix it with some blue violet, like an ultramarine violet, and just fill in a few of these just so that they look a little more interesting and there's a little more variety here and so I'm doing this fast so it's hard to see but I'm just kind of blotting it out with a paper towel here and there so there's some variations in value. Um, a couple more places I just wanted to stand out a little more with the marker. So now I'm done. It's dry and just trying to show you the luminescent quality of the paints. Everything on here luminesces because it's all Daniel Smith luminescent paint, whether it's interference colors, duochrome, or iridescent. I really hope you enjoyed this luminescent paint project today, and I hope you give it a try at home. And now don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and stop by and check out my webpage, my Facebook page, or take a look at my Instagram account if you'd like to learn more about me, my art, and my children's book illustrations.